started early on. Um, when I was seven, I was diagnosed with ADHD, and then at 14, I was diagnosed with autism. The second diagnosis finally made everything start to make, finally started, finally made everything start to make sense. It was a turning point for me because it helped me understand that the way I experience the world and process information is different, but that doesn't mean it's wrong. For years, I struggled to fit in, in a world that seemed designed for neurotypicals, whether it was in school or in the workplace. I often felt like I was useless or that I would never be able to progress. I felt that I was constantly trying to meet expectations that weren't built for someone with my brain. It was frustrating and it left me feeling like I wasn't capable of achieving success on my own terms. But something changed when I started researching autism and learning more about my ADHD. The more I understood about how my brain worked, the more I realized that I wasn't broken. I just needed to find a way of working and living that suited my strengths. My neurodiversities weren't obstacles to overcome. They were simply a part of who I am and learning to work with them has allowed me to flourish. A big part of my journey has been the support of my family and loved ones. Their encouragement has helped me see that I could create my own path, one that wasn't limited by the rigid structures of a traditional workplace. With their help, I started CVS Technical, a business that not only aligns with my special interests in technology and IT, but also allows me to work in a way that's suitable for me. Running my own, my own business has given me freedom to create an environment that suits my needs, where I can pace myself, manage my energy, and take pride in my attention to detail and my problem-solving skills. It has been a transformative experience, and I'm incredibly proud of what I've built so far. Looking back, I can see that once what once felt like barriers were actually opportunities in disguise. By understanding and embracing my neurodiversity, I've been able to create a business that works for me, and I hope my story can inspire others to do the same. If there's one thing I've learned, it's that success isn't about fitting into someone else's mold. It's about building a life and a career that allows you to thrive just as you are. I worked in IT support for, about two, for a few years before starting CVS Technical, completing two apprenticeships. While I was in these roles, I noticed that the IT industry loves fixing things, but they don't really like telling their users how they fixed it or what created the issue. As someone who know, wants to know exactly why things are happening and how, I thought, why don't we explain these things? I also thought that people would probably have fewer issues if we explained how we fix them. I understand it's probably not the best business model, but it suited my conscience a lot better. So when I started CVS Technical, I decided I wanted to be as transparent as possible, putting the customer at the center of every repair and trying to educate them in the process. Whilst helping my customers, I was able to help myself at the same time. Running CVS Technical has allowed me to work around my neurodivergence by creating my own work hours, choosing projects that I enjoy, and changing my workspace and working from home where my projects allow. One of the earliest challenges I faced in when I started the business was communication, particularly when it came to networking and client interactions. Traditional communication norms don't always fit my natural style. Verbal conversations, especially on the spot, can sometimes feel like a huge challenge, particularly in a high pressure situation. What helped me was understanding the difference between communication preferences and boundaries. And I've learned to set boundaries, like scheduling calls or meetings at times when I'm more alert and prepared. But beyond that, I've leaned heavily on written communication, email, messaging apps, and even detailed client briefs, giving me time to process information and respond in a clear, thought-out way. It reduces the pressure to perform verbally and allows me to communicate in a way that feels more natural and effective to me. The world of business can feel fast-paced, chaotic, and overwhelming, which can lead to sensory overload. This was especially true in the early days when I was trying to manage multiple things at once, client rep requests, repairs, technical issues, and everyday business operations. What's been crucial for me is learning to adapt my environment. I've structured my workplace to be quiet and calm, reducing sensory input that can be distracting or overwhelming. I use noise canceling headphones, keep my work environment, environment visually minimal, and set clear boundaries on my schedule. I've also learned to ask for support when I need it, whether that's outsourcing certain tasks or collaborating with people who can take on the parts of the job that would otherwise lead to burnout. Seeking help is not a weakness, but it is a strength. 
executive function challenges, things like organizing tasks, managing time, and keeping on top of my to-do lists are something I face on a daily basis. These challenges can make running a business seem chaotic. However, I've found that the right tools and routines can turn things around. I rely heavily on apps and technology to stay organized. Task management apps like Trello or To-Do List help me break down big projects into manageable steps. I also use reminders to ensure nothing falls through the cracks. But more than just apps, having a constant routine has, helped, has made a huge difference. By breaking my day into predictable, structured chunks of, my, of time, I'm able to avoid feeling overwhelmed by all the little things that need doing. Imposter syndrome and overcoming doubts as an autistic entrepreneur. Starting my own business was exciting, but it came with a lot of doubt. As someone who is both autistic and navigating the business world, I often found myself questioning whether I belonged in this space. I'd attend meetings or industry events and feel out of place, wondering if I was doing it right or if others noticed that I didn't quite fit the mold of a typical business owner. And that feeling like I didn't belong was classic imposter syndrome. What helped me work through it was realizing that there isn't just one way to be successful in business. The idea that you have to meet certain norms or expectations is a myth. My differences are actually my strengths. For example, my attention to detail and problem solving abilities set me apart and helped me serve my clients better instead of trying to fit into a traditional mold. And I've embraced my unique approach to business. Another thing that has helped is self-validation, reminding myself that I've built something valuable with CVS Technical and that my clients trust me because of the work I deliver, not because I conform to some idea of what a business owner should be. Imposter syndrome is real, but the way to combat it is to acknowledge your own strengths, valuing your unique contributions and trusting that you deserve your success, regardless of how different your path looks from everyone else's. Wins and successes. One of the most rewarding parts of running CVS Technical is seeing how even small solutions can make a huge difference in someone's life. For instance, I helped an elderly client regain connection with her loved ones after fixing her iPad, and I built a custom system for a business that improved their productivity. These experiences have reinforced my belief that CVS Technical is more than just an IT service. It's a tool for connection and a way to improve lives. Building this business has allowed me to reflect my values of transparency, inclusivity, and understanding in every client interaction. My advice for autistic entrepreneurs, play to your strengths. Some autistic traits like hyper-focus, attention to detail, and seeing problems from a unique perspective can be a huge asset in business. These traits have helped me to solve complex issues and build long-term relationships with clients. Embrace what makes you different. Those qualities are often your biggest strengths. Building a support network. No one succeeds alone, and I've connected with mentors, other autistic business owners, and neurodivergent resources to build a support system that helps me to grow. Find people who can understand your challenges and who can offer guidance when needed. Managing burnout. Burnout is a risk when you're passionate about your work. To avoid it, I manage my energy levels and create a work environment that fits my needs and sets clear, and set clear boundaries with my clients. Self-care is a necessary part of running a business. Persevering through setbacks. Every business faces challenges and setbacks are inevitable, but the key is to learn from mistakes and stay adaptable and maintain perspective. No setback defines your overall success. It is just a part of the journey. I hope my journey has shown you that there is no one way to succeed as an entrepreneur, especially as an autistic person. But by embracing your neurodivergence, playing to your strengths and building a supportive environment, you can thrive in ways that work for you.